On this Wednesday edition of Locked On Grizzlies, it is a wonderful day here because my partner, Michael Cole, Memphis Grizzlies beat writer for the Commercial Appeal, he put out a ton of content on Tuesday about these very Memphis Grizzlies. I wonder what we could talk about on this episode of the show. Wait, if only I had DeMichael Cole as a co-host to discuss all this great stuff that he wrote about. Oh, there's DeMichael Cole right there. What a happy coincidence. We're talking power rankings, surprises, negotiations with Luke Kennard, second round steals and more. Lock in with us on this Wednesday edition of Lockdown Grizzlies. You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It, of course, is not just a Wednesday edition of Locked On Grizzlies. It is also Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth to everybody out there. A very important day. It's always been an important day since it's been celebrated, but obviously in recent years, it's become more of a focus in the American psyche. So happy Juneteenth, a well-deserved day off, hopefully. For those of you listening, watching, wherever you're checking out Locked On Grizzlies, it's not a day off for us, though. Hopefully you're with us checking out some great content on this important day here on Juneteenth. Today's episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get Started. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts as proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe over on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you get podcasts. The comments were hopping on YouTube. Uh, they, I asked for comments and they gave them to us, partner, uh, talking about all the different stuff with Xavier Tillman. I'm proud of our audience. I feel the like they'll be they'll be hopping today, too. Yeah. Oh, there. Oh, there's a lot to discuss yeah. on this episode. So. <laughs> Make sure you're uh, you're hanging out in the comments, and we're building a nice little community there, especially on YouTube. So thanks to everybody who's liked, commented, rated, reviewed, and subscribed. Locked on Grizzlies. Uh, to Michael, obviously the Boston Celtics are now NBA champions, and yep. I feel like there will be time to digest that in the days ahead, uh, especially once we get out of the draft and that sort of thing. What it means, uh, but obviously in Memphis, what it means is the season is now over for everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. And now that the season is over, as I alluded to at the start of the show, you did a tremendous job. DeMichael always does a phenomenal job over at the Commercial Appeal. Make sure you're following him at DeMichael C if you don't already do so. But you put out three pieces on Tuesday that were really impressive pieces. And uh, I know you have a little bit of time to work on things and all that stuff, but they were really good and I really enjoyed them. Uh, but I got to be honest, there's one piece that I read that made me angry. Mm. And I'm going to do my best to not rant because this is a Michael. I, I know which one you're talking about. This is this is your content day. You gave us everything that we're talking about. Shout out to Michael Cole. But the fact that in ESPN's way too early power rankings for next season, and I want to stress, they're doing this to make people mad. Me in particular, I feel like at this point, ESPN. If you've been following my career covering the Grizzlies here on Lockdown Grizzlies the last couple of years. It's they almost just, like they do it on purpose. They just throw that bait out there, and Joe's just that big fish. I'm just always just happy just comes to over and bites the hook every time. I sure do take the <laughs> take the bite every time, um, and I'm doing it here. They have the Memphis Grizzlies ranked 19th overall in the NBA going into the 2024-2025 season, and as you point out in your article, they have them 11th in the Western Conference. Mm. If that actually occurs and this team is healthy, which is a major if. Mm -hmm. Taylor Jenkins should be fired, and I would argue Zach Kleiman should be too. And mm. I'm a step away from saying blow the whole thing up. It's not going to happen that way. One of the things that frustrates me about these rankings is they talk about the durability of stars. And in your article, you talk about John Morant has missed large swaths of games over the last two yeah. seasons. Bain has missed sizable chunks. It's fair to point that stuff out. But there's other teams that have to deal with those health concerns. Exactly. It's not like the Phoenix Suns are walking around at full strength all the time. Bradley Beal is constantly in a walking boot. He's wearing one on Cancun and Cabo as we speak. He's wearing a he's wearing a Gucci freaking walking boot or something like that. Okay? When's the last time we seen Kawhi Leonard and, and Paul George just go through an entire playoff run? Exactly. Have we ever seen that really? So if you're going to assume health issues for one team, you should assume them for the other ones that could potentially have those health issues. Or you mm -hmm. just assume that the Lakers are going to figure it out. They don't have a head coach right now. Like, what are we talking about in terms of these rankings? Memphis, in fairness to you and I, partner, we kind of predicted that teams, uh, that the Grizzlies would be overlooked going into next season. And this is just the first and earliest example of that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's good for them, I think, you know, because the Grizzlies were a young team a couple seasons ago. My first year covering the team, I remember the 56 win team. Uh, people weren't expecting them to do what they were doing. When they went on the long run in January when they took off and they were beating all these notable teams, people still were kind of asleep on the idea that the Grizzlies were a contender at that time. Then the all-access, you know, event comes and, you know, we see the Grizzlies record without Ja, you know, with Tyus in the starting lineup. All these great things start happening. And then last season happened, right? You know, all the flowers everyone's expecting. And they still got the number two seed, but it came with a little bit – you know, uh, more uh, hiccups on the, along the road, it, mainly uh, Stephen Adams, you know, injury. And it led to a first-round exit against a really good Lakers team, which wasn't your typical seventh seed. Uh, but uh, the Grizzlies lost in six games in that series and quite, quite, pretty much got manhandled. Like, it it was a dominant uh, Lakers series in that standpoint. But I remember at the beginning of this season talking to the players, you know, Marcus Smart, Desmond Bain, uh, even some of the other guys like Jaron. And Marcus had a different perspective because, you know, he came from Boston with all the winning. But even the other guys, uh, they were saying, like, you know, this might be good for us. Like we, we've been patted on the back a lot the last couple of years. And and this is a this is a humbling experience. The first round loss was humbling, but this is another level. You know, we're 6-19 and 19 to start the season and all that. And then John comes back, they go 6-3, and three, right? That's kind of the part where when you talk about these early power rankings and how laughable it is to me, uh, because I think it's laughable. Uh, You're talking about a team, you can say whatever you want about the playoff Grizzlies. The regular season Grizzlies have kicked the league's butt. When they're healthy, it's pretty undisputed over the last two years. They're one of the best regular season teams in the NBA. Not a doubt. And if you go back to those two 50-plus win seasons, John Morant missed more than 15 games in each of those seasons. Uh, Desmond Bain, uh, the the second year during that stretch, uh, missed a sizable chunk. Jaron, the, the first year during that stretch, missed a sizable chunk. Uh, so, assuming health is is you know whatever, like you, you can't really predict that, but you can't predict if all these other teams as well. And sometimes it's the teams that's been healthy for a while. Like think of a team like the Nuggets; they've been pretty much mostly healthy the last couple seasons. No, Jamal Murray had some hiccups this year or whatever, but for the most part, their core has been. Mainly intact. Does wear and tear finally catch up to them? The uh, Oklahoma City Thunder yeah, had yeah. almost no injury concerns all year long. All year long, right? And then, I mean, you just keep going down the list, and there are so many teams that the, that rely on their top guys. You know, the Lakers, LeBron James is going to be 40 in December. Uh, you're going to be relying on 40-year-old LeBron James to get you over the hump. But I get it. The, the West is very good. But the teams, as we saw this year, as we saw the last couple of years, continuity wins in the West. The the Grizzlies, when it comes to continuity, there's not a lot of teams I'm putting ahead of them. Because no matter how many games John Morant, Desmond Bain, and Jaron Jackson Jr. miss, when the ball's shoved in the middle of the court and they're all on the floor together, it's riding the bike, Joe. It's like backpedaling. It's it's it's, it's simple work for them. Right? It's, it's something that they've been doing for the last four seasons together. And uh, talent-wise, Going back to, to the stretch with y'all earlier this season, because I, I keep – that's the laughable part to me, Joe. They went 6-3 and three this season with John ja Morant in the lineup. 6-3. and three. Over, the, over the full course of the season, I believe that would have had them third or fourth in the Western Conference stand. That's without – basically, I'm not even going to say that's without a starting center. But that was with Bismack Biombo as the starting center. So you, you do the math. Look at the names that me and Joe and others have talked about over the last few days. Uh, newsflash, they're all better than Bismack Biombo. Uh, Much so better get, than Bismack Biombo. You, you get an upgrade there, and you get another year with Ja Dez, Marcus Smart. I don't see 50 wins being that hard of a reach for this team. And if they can get to that 50 win, they're a top six team for sure. Like, I don't even want to discuss play, play in with the Grizzlies. Like, I think they're top six for sure. It's absurd to say that they're anything other than top six. Now, if you want to say they're six – we can have that conversation, right? If you want to For say sure. they're five, we can have that conversation. You talk about continuity. The yeah. Denver Nuggets, in my opinion, should probably rated be rated ahead of the Memphis Grizzlies. I think you can argue that the Dallas Mavericks, right? To be the man, you got to beat the man. If you want to put the Mavericks mm -hmm. in front of the Grizzlies, I don't know that I and agree. I would. I would. Right. I, I, I'm with you. I think mm -hmm. I would put Memphis in front of them too, but I at least can mm -hmm. understand that argument. 
Right, right? of course. Of the course. Minnesota Timberwolves. I think I can understand that argument. Even the Thunder, maybe. I need to see it. But again, I just rattled off four teams. That puts Memphis at fifth. Yeah. Uh, there is no world where if this team is healthy with their top three guys being healthy, and again, if you're assuming that for Memphis or for everybody else, you got to assume it for Memphis. Yep. If those three guys are out there, they win 50 games. I'm with you entirely. Now, again, could they struggle in the playoffs, losing the first round? All bets are off, depending on how they tweak this roster over the upcoming offseason. We'll talk more about that, of course, on the episodes to come. But I, I think that that ranking was laughable. And, you know, you want to put Boston one, totally understandable. I think you can make an argument for a few teams. There, there's not 10 teams better than the Memphis Grizzlies in the West. Let alone Conference. 15, 16, right. 17, 18. And the entire NBA. <laughs> yeah, that's completely absurd. So let us know how angry you are. Maybe on a scale of 1 to 10. 1, you're not angry at all. 10, you're angrier than me and everything in between. Let us know how you're feeling about ESPN baiting me once again into being mad about their dumb ranking system. When we come back here on Locked on Grizzlies, piece number two from DeMichael Cole over the commercial appeal, there is a CBA uh, – tweak that has gone into mm -hmm. effect that allows for Memphis to negotiate with guys that uh, eligible for contract extensions earlier than ever before. DeMichael will explain that next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride-or-die whip alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance things like superchargers things like roof racks things like all the different types of pieces that could go for your car exhaust kits led headlights speed power style ebay motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one whip you will always find exactly what you're looking for with the ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your car every time or your money back with ebay motors you are burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it is easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die whip alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to United States customers. We come back here on Lockdown Grizzlies talking about Luke Kennard, at least potentially, talking extension with Memphis as we speak. Stick with us. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, joined by my co-host, to Michael Cole, the commercial appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. And today is one of those beautiful days yeah. on this Wednesday, this Juneteenth, because DeMichael has single-handedly crafted the program for us. Three great pieces <laughs> that came out over the commercial appeal through the Memphis Grizzlies beat writer, the award-winning DeMichael Cole. Three great topics for us to discuss. We talked about the stupid ESPN power rankings, and we don't have to mention them again, aside from me reminding you that they exist, I guess. Hopefully, bulletin board material for the Memphis Grizzlies oh, yeah. going into oh, the offseason. Sure. Um, another piece that you put out to Michael was the, a new tweak in the CBA that allows for Memphis to discuss contract extensions with players that are eligible for them immediately after the NBA Finals, essentially. And obviously, the biggest name that is in that boat this year, Luke Kennard. Yeah, and to, to start, uh, there are a few players on the team that kind of meet the criteria for this. But in, in the piece that you mentioned, I only mentioned a couple guys – uh, that's Luke Kennard, and then the other one was, was Lamar Stevens. But actually, in reality, uh, Santi Aldama and Zaire Williams uh, meet the, the definition of players who, who are extension eligible, who can technically sign extensions with the team. Uh, well, not sign. They, they can start negotiation, as you, as you mentioned. But we know how this works. It's the same way with free agency all the time, right? You see June 30th, the window opens, and as soon as the window opens, this player agrees to a contract with this team. But you don't see those teams officially announce them until July 6th. So the negotiation period will start now, but we won't hear. You know, we'll see reports that, oh, Luke Kennard, this guy, that guy may be back or whatnot. Uh, but you won't hear that from the team that something is official until July 6th. That's not new. What is new is the fact that the Grizzlies can talk to those guys that we just mentioned. Uh, think of it for the baseball fans out there. It's like when, you know, the World Series wraps up. Right after that, you can go get your guys and whatnot. Uh, and it's a little bit different, you know, in sport like football where you have a period. And same thing for basketball for the most part. But getting into the Luke Kennard conversation, it's the most interesting one, I think, of the players that are already on the roster. Uh, he technically isn't a free agent right now, but mark the date now. And me and Joe talk about it a little bit more as the day get closer. It's June 29th. That is the day where the Grizzlies have to make a decision on Luke on Luke Kennard's team option. Uh, the reason that I listed him here, because personally, 
I think it's in the Grizzlies, and I, I want to get your thoughts on this as well, uh, Joe. I think it's in the Grizzlies' best interest to go ahead and figure this team option thing out right now. I and mean, they've had the last month or so. I mean, I know that they've been dialoguing about this. Figure it out right now. Go ahead and try to get it done, whether it's you decline it, whether it's you pick it up. The point is you want to have that figured out because now you got a leg up. Even if you pick up his option, he's extension eligible, and you can talk extension uh, all the way up into June 30th because if you wait until the 29th, let's say they decide to decline it. You decline it on the 29th or whatever, which a lot of teams tend to wait till the last day. Uh, if the Grizzlies do that in this case, Luke Kennard on June 30th, the very next day at around 6 or 7 p.m., uh, we'll be able to talk to other teams. And if you give other teams the, the same leeway uh, to talk to him as the Grizzlies, I'm not so sure that he's back in Memphis. And the Grizzlies do want him back. Let's be clear on that. I'm curious if Memphis were to opt out of the team option, right? Yeah. What would their options be in terms of re-signing him? I think with Zach Randolph years ago, there was a situation mm -hmm. where they extended him. Zebo opted. I think it was a player option was the difference. Zebo yeah, yeah. opted in, and then there was money after that. Would would it make sense for Luke? Because obviously there's a balancing act here, right? Like Luke Kennard sure. is trying to maximize his maximum amount of money making with his athletic ability and his athletic mm -hmm. career, which makes total sense. I will never mm -hmm. begrudge a player for doing that. You have a finite amount of time to game the system here. You won the genetic lottery. You're going <laughs> to make as much money as humanly possible because of it. Yeah. Good for you. But there's also the reality you know, of Luke being a try hard defensively, struggling with the physicality of opposing teams defensively, especially in the postseason. Yep. Does it behoove Luke to opt to have that team option opted out of and then Memphis sign him to a three year, $39 million contract or something like yep. that? Maybe is that something that's possible? Do they have to opt into the team option to get to that bird rights year? How does that work with the contract? No, they still, w without the team option, I think they can still uh, uh, do that. But the, the problem is, like you said, three years, 39. I think that's that's roughly 13 million a year. But that number still puts the Grizzlies uh, in the in the first apron. You know, because right. the thing is, if you're the Grizzlies, you try you want to probably get the number down a little bit more uh, so you can dodge the first. Apron. They're right on the edge right now. So if you could, I think off the top of my head, I don't know the exact number, but if you could get him to three years, 33 million or uh, something like that, which is. Which is tough because the mid-level exception is going to be 12 million. More on the mid-level exception in a second. But uh, if you could get him down to 333, uh, that theoretically would probably put you below the first apron. And then people are saying, well, how much does the first apron really matter? The Grizz is going to be in a luxury tax regardless. Well, the biggest key for the Grizzlies in the first apron this year as, it, uh, as we're talking about the roster construction if the Grizzlies are in the first apron, Joe, the one problem that is presented for Memphis uh, with the restrictions of the first apron is they won't have access to the $12 million mid-level exception. They'll they'll get the taxpayer mid-level exception, which is not even half of that, which is expected yeah. to be around $5 million, uh, this upcoming season. Uh, so why does that matter? Well, me and Joe have been talking about it. A lot of you have been asking about it and talking about it as well. The idea that the Grizzlies need to get a pretty decent big man uh, with a $12 million mid-level exception. You will have a, a, a really good pick of starting caliber bigs in the NBA. $12, $12 million mid-level exception. You're talking about guys like Brandon Clark, Robert Williams, all these centers, Wendell Carter. They're around that $14, $15 million range. So you're talking about right below them. In that range, so you're gonna probably get a starting caliber big in that case. But if you're in the first apron, that number goes all the way down from 12 million to five million. Mm -hmm. Now you got a little smaller uh, of a pick there, and sure, still some solid bigs that you can get for five mil, you know, a year. Uh, but I don't think you're looking at too many starters unless some guys, you know, want to take a discount. So that's why the Luke Kennard situation. Uh, is very important to monitor. It's not even just with Luke Kennard. Luke Kennard kind of, in a way, is the key to the entire Grizzlies offseason and how they can make up this thing in terms of what they can do around him, uh, what they can do with him, and, and, and what they can do in the draft. 
And this could be one of those times because Memphis has done a lot of descending value contracts. This could be one of those times where it makes more sense to do an ascending value mm -hmm. contract for Canard exactly. because of the new TV deal. So that money, again, I think it's a 10% cap on how much the cap can grow yeah. uh, from year to year, something like that. Yep. But still, that's, that's a sizable increase. And, you know, that could be a difference between being a non-tax team entirely and being a first apron team, depending on the season. So something to watch with Canard's extension talks to be sure if they're even happening i agree with uh DeMichael. i think they want luke back but the number has to make sense 14 is is definitely the tippy top of what his actual value is mm -hmm. i think that it would make sense for both sides to negotiate a long-term deal with the where the number is friendlier for memphis yeah. right now and it gets yep. luke long-term guaranteed money uh let us know what you guys think about canard and the extension talks in the comments below uh, when we come back here on Locked On Grizzlies, we'll close out this Wednesday edition of the show. To Michael again, another tremendous piece. He had an article about second round sneaky players. One of them he and I agree on, and I uh -oh. think that's that's one of the ones that we're certainly going to talk about coming up next here on Locked On Grizzlies. But first, you'll notice that to Michael and I, we we interact well. We have wonderful conversations. I I would even say I. I I like the Michael. We're not yelling at each other, okay? This isn't Fox Sports. This isn't ESPN. This is Locked On Grizzlies, proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. We are providing the best analysis and conversation about the Grizzlies that we can. Check out conversations about all sorts of different teams and leagues over on Locked On Sports Today, over as part of the YouTube 24-7 streaming channel. You can also check it out on Amazon on the Free Fire TV channels app. Again, Locked On Sports Today. All the great content, not just from the NBA, but the NFL, NHL, MLB, every league, every team. Lockdown Grizzlies pops up on there every once in a while, but you can check out all the great stuff that our network does over at Lockdown Sports today. This episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by FanDuel. Summertime means baseball. Summertime means the conclusion of the NBA season, the conclusion of the NHL season, the Olympics coming up. You can bet on it all over at FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. You heard me right, 200 bucks that you can use to bet on everything from MVPs hitting one out of the park, up and down, left and right, all the great action that you can get over at FanDuel.com. So again, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summit bucket, summer bucket list. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. Check out FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. When we come back here on Lockdown Grizzlies, closing out this episode of the show, talking to Michael's second round steals. Stick with us. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, flying as a duo today. Yeah. Birds of a feather We're flock here. together, and uh, it gets no uh, gets no more fun talking basketball than with the Michael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. It's been a great show talking ESPN stupidity. Uh, the very smart deal that both Luke Kennard and the Grizzlies should be trying to negotiate as we speak. Yep. We'll close out with DeMichael's third excellent piece, talking about second-round steals that Memphis could be looking at. Obviously, the Grizzlies have nailed the second round in recent years. Vince Williams Jr., Gigi Jackson, both second-round picks. And, DeMichael, I'll let you talk about your personal favorites, but I want to start yeah. with Baylor Shireman because that was one of my That's diamonds. Your guy. That's your guy, yeah. And I'm worried <laughs> that – if if you see him, if, and if, if I see him, most, yeah. <laughs> and more and more people are seeing him, maybe he's not a diamond in the rough. Maybe he's a guy they're going to have to trade up to try to get in the late first round or something like that. But yeah. I think he'd be worth it, depending on what they do at number nine. He's pretty darn good at basketball, yeah. and he's not a he's not a defensive liability. He's an offensive weapon from range in particular, but he also can defend a little bit, and, and that three and D model should be attractive to the Grizzlies. So I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of Shireman from Creighton, another older player that can come in and contribute right now. But let our audience know of anybody else beyond Shireman that uh, you like there in the second round for the Grizzlies. Because you have some new names as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shireman is one that that stands out, of course. You know, I think we both can agree he's one of the top shooters in the draft. And and this is kind of a playoff of the Dalton Connett and the Reed Shepard that I've kind of talked about in the first round. If they end up getting a big in the first, well, you Plenty of good shooters are still available, starting with him. But uh, I've, I've also talked about the wing defenders, right? You know, going to get those wing defenders uh, who have uh, some tough type of upside to them. And one guy that stands out to me is Kevin McCullough out of Kansas. Uh, you'll remember, Joe, because I remember uh, I remember in mid, I would say mid, 
mid February, but late January, we were talking about him as like a mid mid first round pick, late lottery option, you know, for the Grizzlies. This is before we you know thought they maybe have a top ten pick or whatever the case may be. But but he seemed like a very realistic option in that range. And then of course you know the injuries uh, happened. He had a very injury real uh, last year at Kansas. Uh, but when you look at him as a player uh, defensively, you know, six seven can play the two, can play the three. Uh, he projects well on that end of the floor. Did not shoot the basketball particularly well from from beyond the arc, but rebounding, playmaking potential. Uh, he has some of those things to his game, and he and he made a noticeable impact. You know, Kansas when he was playing, they were really good. When he didn't play, we saw they were early exit in the NCAA tournament. So, uh, you know, I think he is one that stands out to me as well. Then there's Jalen Wells. Um, this one is more of a – I didn't know much about this guy, uh, but his name has come up a couple times, Joe, uh, from people I'm talking to just, uh, you know, around the Grizzlies. You know, I, I know that uh, people in the front office have been watching him, monitoring him a little closely. Uh, so uh, this is the name that personally I wasn't all too familiar with with the draft process, but I do know that the Grizzlies have interest in this player in particular, in Jalen Wells. So uh, – that's why he's pretty much included on this list. And what role does he feel? He feels the exact role that the prototype that, you know, I've talked about here on a few times on this show. Uh, I know the Grizzlies have kind of a, a jumbo grouping on the wing, but Jalen Wells, he is a 6'8 wing who shoots the three-pointer really well. The Grizzlies want shooters. I, I'm going to keep saying it, Joe, until after the draft. They want shooters. They want shooters. They want Shooters. This is another guy. Shot 41.7% from three-point range. One year at Washington State, though. So some questions there because he played two basketball his first two years. Goes to Washington State for one year. Didn't do too much, you know, as a defensive playmaker, offensive playmaker. I don't think he only he barely averaged over an assist. Uh didn't average over a steal or a block or anything like that. So this is more of like one of those specialty shooters. A solid, you know, positionally defender, I would say at this point. Uh, but uh you know, he's someone who could kind of fit in from the standpoint of we don't need you to do too much. But then there's the bigs, you know, and I think you, he'll probably have a little bit more interest in these guys because, in my opinion, in the second round, you, you, you're going for the bigs. You're looking for someone who, who's raw with some upside. Maybe you put him on a two-way contract to start off and and maybe could potentially turn into a starting big. Uh, old Rich Chomchi, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but uh, – he comes from the NBA Academy in Africa, and he's from Cameroon. I don't have to remind you that there's a center in the NBA right now from Cameroon that's won an MVP as of recently, and he plays with the Philadelphia 76ers. So uh, uh, even though he's playing with Team USA in the Olympics. <laughs> but, but with all that being said, uh, this this old rich uh, Chomchi uh, guy, uh, Joe, I encourage people to go check him out. 6'11", uh, 230 pounds or so right now. Smooth shooting stroke. I saw some comparisons with him to like some some stretch four, stretch five type guys. Not, this is not just someone who uh, they're projecting to be your typical, you know, go block shots on one end, go catch lobs on the other end type of big. But he's only been playing basketball for I think maybe like seven eight years at this point. He started off as a as a thirteen year old. Didn't pick up a basketball till he was thirteen. You know, as I said, he comes from the NBA academy in Africa, so we know how. NBA with the basketball without borders program and things like that, they've emphasized pushing the game internationally and particularly with their program in Africa. Uh, this could be uh, the latest example of uh, a success from that program. A seven four wingspan, capable of blocking some shots. Again, it's the little things he's got to work on, and it's it's he seems raw. You know, this feel for the game. He'll make some mistakes where you, you probably feel like, oh, he's open for a shot, but he didn't see he was open until after the fact that he was open. So uh, certain things like that, uh, feel for the game. And uh, Nafali Dante, Oregon big, played five years, barely played for his first couple years there. Last couple years, uh, Pac-12 all-defensive type guy. Now, he's more of your typical uh, big. I like him because he's 6'11", 260, someone mm -hmm. who physically can come in day one, uh, hold his own, so he could be a potential backup big. A shot 69.5% in college, that's a, that's the good. But the only reason he shot that good, Joe, is because they all were pretty much layups, dunks, and a couple feet from the basket. So uh, very limited offensively. But 
that's what you're looking at in the second round. As you see with most of these players, Baylor Shine and Jalen Wells, they're more shooters. You know, Shire- Shireman has a little bit more to his game than that. But but for the most part, that's what you're identifying them for. Uh, Dante, physicality, size, same thing with Ulrich. And then, of course, uh, as well with Kevin McCullough, the defensive ability. So some real good second round options out there, Joe. I love all of those names. I like Shireman the best, as we talked about a little yeah. bit a moment ago. Me too. But I, I really like Kamshi. I think that's an yeah. interesting late second round. Like you said, the ultimate upside swing. That's a guy that you put on a two-way contract. You tell him you're going to be down with the Memphis Hustle for the year. And you, yeah. you let him get those live reps and let him – let's see how he does. I think there's – you know, we've talked about it a couple times here on the show to Michael yeah. – this draft may not have a LeBron James. It may not have a superstar. But I do right. think there's some legitimate depth in terms of finding role players. And the Grizzlies, that's the stage that they're at in the game. So uh, let us know what you think of DeMichael's choices there in the comments. Uh, we're both high on Shireman. Maybe you're higher on somebody else. Hit us up and let us know what you think. Uh, when we come back on our next episode of Locked on Grizzlies, it'll be a Thursday edition of the show. To Michael, lots of different angles we could take in terms of the NBA Finals. Didn't talk about the champion Celtics really at all on this episode. Lots of ways that we can kind of look at the lay of the land of the NBA. Maybe we come up with our own power rankings uh, yeah. where we think Memphis legitimately should be slated. Yeah, I think that's, you know, we saw ESPN's power ranking. There are going to be some more that come out over the next few days or whatever the mm-hmm. case may be. But you know what? Uh, I, I said that I think they're a top six team. I think we can firmly kind of try to place them uh, the Grizzlies, that is, in, in the range of where we think they are sitting in the West. Right now, before free agency, before, you know, everything else gets taken care of. And, of course, we'll revisit that conversation later in the offseason. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Sounds like a good Thursday edition of Locked On Grizzlies. Thank you for joining us for our Wednesday edition of the show. Make sure you're following DeMichael at DeMichael C. Follow me on X at Joe Mullinax. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts over at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, uh YouTube, literally anywhere you get a podcast, you can get Locked On Grizzlies. And make sure you're checking us out each and every time an episode drops as we are proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every single day. Make sure you're checking out Locked On NBA, Locked On Sports Today. You can check out the Locked On Podcast Network all day long and get all the content that you need, uh, not just about the NBA, but sports overall. When it comes to the Memphis Grizzlies, we'll catch you tomorrow here on Lockdown Grizzlies. For DeMichael, I'm Joe. Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Apple, wherever you get podcasts, make us a part of your experience.